The Mennonites are a Protestant Christian group that was founded in the 1500s in Switzerland by a Roman Catholic priest named Menno Simons. They are known for their custom of wanting to stay separated from the larger world and believing that hard manual labor in the seclusion of their community is the key to going to heaven. This has led people to consider them a very mysterious group. However, in 2009, that changed when a Mennonite community in Bolivia was at the center of a case that got a lot of attention on account of the immense scandal it exposed. The scandal was so pivotal that it inspired a 2018 book titled Women Talking, which was made into a movie in 2022. So today, we're going to talk about the Manitoba case. In the mid-2000s, families in a Bolivian Mennonite community called Manitoba began noticing that they were waking up in the mornings feeling like they had been drugged the night before. The women and girls of these households were waking up every morning covered in bruises, dirt, and bodily fluids, and not remembering what happened to cause this. They confided in each other that they were having strange dreams of men entering their rooms and taking advantage of them. The community believed that evil spirits and demons were the cause. However, what the citizens of Manitoba found strange was that these incidents would stop if someone stayed awake at night to stand guard of their homes. One night in June 2009, two men who were local to the Mennonite community were caught attempting to break into a house, and they identified other people who were also involved in the break-ins, resulting in a total of eight men ranging from 19 to 43 years of age being apprehended by community members. Following the capture of the assailants, women and girls began giving reports to the police. The victims were forensically examined and found to have sustained bodily trauma. The victims' ages ranged from 3 to 65 years old. More examinations could have been conducted, but a number of parents in the community refused to take their children to be examined out of fear that it would be difficult to marry off their daughters if people knew they had been violated. Psychological support was also offered to the victims, but the Bishop of Manitoba turned the services away, arguing, why would they need counseling if they weren't even awake when it happened? The victims were frightened to attest to the attacks in court, yet devastated at the possibility of the men being acquitted and returning to Manitoba, and ultimately decided to testify despite their trepidations. The men confessed that they had been drugging the families and interfering with the women and girls since 2005. When asked how they managed to sedate entire households like they did, they explained that a local veterinarian had supplied them with a chemical tranquilizer and that they would hide under open windows and wait for the family to turn in for the night. Then they would spray the chemical to tranquilize everyone resting inside. They were convicted of violating over a hundred women and girls. There are other Mennonite communities in Bolivia and North America who doubt that the crimes were truly committed. Some think the men were fall guys to hide degeneracy within the victims' families themselves. One of the original eight assailants has since escaped, and the remaining seven were sentenced to 25 years in prison, while the veterinarian who supplied the spray to anesthetize the families was sentenced to 12 years. They are currently being kept in Palmasola Prison in Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia. In 2011, allegations that men and boys were also preyed on during these attacks surfaced. Since then, there have been petitions in Manitoba that the crime should be forgiven and that the men should be released and brought back into the community. The victims and their families were upset and afraid of the men returning. They claimed that the assailants had been threatening them from prison. In 2013, journalist Jean Friedman Rudowski visited Manitoba for research and, upon interviewing residents, was told that the crimes haven't stopped. I think that this case presents us with the reality that religion is one of the most influential institutions in society. Human beings are social by nature and often rely on various organizations like religion to give them a sense of identity and a feeling of togetherness and belonging. Some people in positions of authority in these social groups are willing to use the human need for community to exert emotional control over large numbers of people and dismiss bad behavior. 
There are people who will believe that remaining in the good graces of their leaders is more important than protecting their loved ones. It was very unsettling to learn that there were parents who preferred to protect their daughter's marriage prospects rather than ensure that these men were sent to prison for their crimes, that the bishop believed that the victims didn't need to have access to mental health support, and that there is a petition to see these men released and brought back into the community with little to no proof that they've changed. I know the Manitoba incident is more recent history, but I still wanted to talk about it because the thing is, incidents like this case have happened in virtually every religious group. In fact, exploitation is not rare in religious circles, and although religion has an important place in our world, that doesn't mean people should be afraid to speak up when something wrong happens. Have you ever heard of this case? Have you read the book Women Talking or seen the film? If so, what did you think about it? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.